Hey senpai, it's your Kohai, and I'm back today with another in-depth review. Given our most recent expose video on FNEX's collaboration with Yoshitoku, we figured it would only be appropriate to do a video on one of Furyu's PVC figures. Along with the Chinese New Year, we felt that this figure was very apropos. This is the Hatsune Miku 2022 Chinese New Year version by FNEX, which is a 1 7th scale with an MSRP of 39,380 yen. Even though this is the 2022 version, you will notice it is 2024. And yes, this figure did just release in January of 2024. And with that, let's take a look at the box. Taking a look at the box, it is definitely very Chinese New Year themed. We have the red and the gold, red meaning happiness and fire, and gold meaning wealth and prosperity. The shapes in the red are typically the shapes of the lanterns they would use. And then on the back here, we have fireworks, which means dispelling the old and bringing in the new. And then on the sides, we have these different symbols here, which would be the typical ornaments they would use to decorate their wishing trees. In the front, you do see that we have a very large display window, but we really can't see anything except her face because everything else is covered up. Around the box, we do have a decent amount of the prototype photos. The box is made out of decent cardboard, and overall, it's a very well-themed average box. Here's a look at the inner packaging. Initial impressions for this figure, she is about 12 and a half inches or almost 32 centimeters tall. She is extremely faithful to the artwork, which we love to see, but even giving her a quick glance over, I can already tell that there are quite a few issues with the paint and modeling quality. So with that, let's dive right in. Taking a look at the paint, we are going to start with the base, which is a red barren peach blossom tree. The bark of the tree is hit with a dark airbrush to give it that shading all around, but unlike in the artwork, which insinuates a lot of modeling detail, it's not reflected in this tree here, which makes it more splotchy than it should be. The peach blossoms themselves were also hit with a darker airbrush, but mostly on the back to give them some depth. But then you have some ones in the front here that don't really look like they got hit with the airbrush at all. And then you come down here towards the bottom of the base and we have three petals that do look like they got hit with the airbrush to give them some shading. But the snow really just looks like it's one color and it really relies on the modeling to give it its depth. Taking a look at Miku herself, we will start with her most prominent feature, which is going to be her hair. And like in a Honolulu figure, we see that her hair is actually the color of this translucent piece, but to give her her more signature hair color, they have used the airbrush to paint this darker blue on top. There are a lot of elements added back into her hair, which we'll talk more about in modeling quality, but these cause there to be cracks, and so the paint starts clumping here, and unfortunately we still see more of those paint clumps in her hair up top and in the bangs in the front. There are a couple different places where they added shading in, and that's going to be in the middle part of her hair in the back and in the sides of her curls. They have added more shading into this curl here just because it's behind the tree. In general, I'm more impressed with the paint and her clothing, but that's also because they added a lot of these smaller pieces in the front back in, and so there's not really a lot of room for error. They did do some line work here on the gold fringe of her outfit, which they more or less did a good job on. There's only a few stray paint marks, but the line work here in her shoes is a little bit more messy. The white of her clothing has no shading. They really relied on the modeling to give it its depth, but they did add shading on the bow on her thigh and in the frills of her skirt. Her skin doesn't have any shading. It's just a matte color that's very pale, although I think that's an intentional choice since it is a snowy day. She's very phantom-like. And they did add the signature color onto her nails. I think where a lot of people are having their grievances is with her mouth. And... A lot of people are saying that they changed her mouth. I don't know if it's so much that they changed her mouth because it is still 3D like it is in the prototype photos, but in the prototype photos, it looks like they added more color inside of her mouth. And so it kind of looks like she has lipstick. And so instead of looking like she has lipstick, now it's a light enough color that it almost looks like she doesn't have teeth. Moving on to her accessories, we see this lantern here, and I really like what they did with the plastic because of the color they use. It looks like light is shining through, but they didn't add any shading onto the gray of the cage, and so it just makes it look very clunky. 
Before moving on to modeling quality, I want to address the grievances I've been seeing from people online. And that is that people are saying that this figure has no shading, which is not true because I just showed you all of the places that this figure does have shading. What it really boils down to is the lighting. People are disappointed because they're comparing it to the artwork. And in the artwork, Miku has a very harsh light source coming from this direction, which is adding a lot of those shadows in depth. Which means that Furu's prototype photos are misleading because in the prototype photos they are using that artistic lighting which has a light source from this direction, albeit it's a softer light and so you can see more of the figure, but it's still showcasing some of those details. But they also didn't showcase photos of it in natural light. And so collectors are getting this figure and seeing it in natural light, or they're seeing photos online where people are using flash, the details are really washed out, and so they're complaining because it doesn't look like the prototype photos and they're saying it has no shading. We're not justifying for you by any means because they should have done what most figure companies do where they have some artistic photos, maybe with a diorama, some artistic lighting, but then also just some photos of the figure in more of a natural light. But because we are in a studio, we would like to replicate for you guys what this figure will look like when we match the lighting that is in the artwork. Now that we've been able to recreate this lighting, we do need to give credit where credit is due. The artist Lita has a masterful understanding of how lighting works, and the sculptor was able to translate this extremely well. All of a sudden now we see that this part of the figure is indeed much darker because it is behind the tree, and this part of the figure that the light is hitting is much lighter. And now we see the darker sections here and in the curl of her hair. And all of a sudden now the shading has appeared on the white part of her outfit. We as humans, we are three-dimensional objects. We rely on lighting to give us our shadows. And so technically speaking, all of the shadows should be able to be created with modeling and light. And so if you can recreate this lighting, we can see that the figure looks exactly like the artwork. But we agree with you, the average consumer, that nobody is displaying their figures with multiple sources of lighting throughout their display. It's just not realistic. If this is the aesthetic that Furu is going for, then they really need to rely on going forward using different types of airbrushing and color variants to achieve this contrast under a natural light. It's a shame that they mismarketed this figure because the consumer's expectations are not properly managed at no fault of their own. And it's a shame because it really takes away from the wonderful sculpt that we see here. Looking at the modeling quality, we will start again with the base, which is the Red Baron Peach Blossom Tree. And then the artwork, they use a lot of harsh linear lines on the bark. And if that were translated to this tree, it would have made it look like the artwork. It would have made it look more realistic. And it would have made it less splotchy. So the splotchiness is really a side effect of the modeling quality instead of the paint. Overall, the peach blossoms are very clunky, and I can see a lot of glue where they were added onto the tree. And then unfortunately, we can see a lot of these seams where the branches were added in here and here. And then there's a very large one, albeit it is kind of hidden on the back here towards the base of the tree. And then we see the snow it has a lot of texture, although I'm not convinced that it looks like snow. And then we see the tree roots here, which are not showcased in the artwork, but they do start to look more cartoony. As I addressed during the paint, there are a lot of pieces added back into her hair, and so we can see there's some here, there are several different pieces in her bangs, and then we got some big chunks here and here. I do really like the movement they were able to capture with her hair, I think it's very Will-O-Wisp-like, and they were very smart to attach it to her leg in the tree, so I don't worry about it sagging over time. Again, with her outfit, they were able to create a lot of movement, and we do see some details here in the silver pieces on the front of her outfit, but I do think a lot of the pieces that were added back in are very clunky and don't have a lot of detail, and this piece here on her leg was glued in. I really like the coattails here on the back, but unfortunately, each side is divided into two pieces, and so you get these really big seams here on either side, although they are hidden on the back. And then, of course, on the back we see her little tail, which we can't see in the front. I'm assuming she is supposed to be this wood dragon, and then we can see her horns on the top here. I do think the lantern looks very cool, but it's not very detailed, so it either needed more modeling or paint or maybe both. 
This figure is based off an artwork, which we can see here, and they translated the artwork to this figure extremely well. I really can't see any differences, maybe other than, uh, you know, we don't have the front tree branch here and maybe some of the back lanterns, but as far as like the placement of the branches, the blossoms, Miku herself, I really don't see any difference at all. And my biggest gripe would be that the tree is not as detailed as the artwork. As I highlighted in the modeling quality, I think the pose is very dynamic. There's a lot of movement between her hair, her clothes, and even in the position of her body. As far as her face goes, her eye decals are set nicely. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I think that they made the shape of her mouth correct. It just needs to be darker because unfortunately right now it looks like she has more of a toothless smile instead of her mouth being open. To me, Miku looks more of a bishoujo than Moe in this figure, albeit maybe a little derpy because of her face, but overall I think she looks very pretty in this figure. Before moving on to the rating, I would like to talk about value because so many people, including us, harp on Furu for overpricing their figures, but as you'll see when we give you the objective value that it actually lands in the 60th percentile of value for figures, which means it's actually slightly above average. Now, given that 40,000 yen price point, I would have liked to see the quality match that. Let's give it a score. Starting with the box, it's your pretty average themed box, so it gets a 3 out of 5. Moving on to production, starting with the paint. In general, I feel it's only slightly below average, but keep in mind that some of those issues were due to the modeling, so it gets a 7 out of 15. The modeling in this figure is generally pretty weak. There are some pretty cool elements, but overall there are too many added back in, which create a lot of seams, so it gets a 6 out of 15. The base is definitely above average, but it should have been as detailed as the artwork. There are too many seams, and the snow is not very convincing, so it gets a 7 out of 10. Moving on to artistry, under art versus model, this is where the figure really excels. The sculpt is exceptional, it matches the artwork almost perfectly, with the sole exception being the tree so it gets a 9 out of 10. For the pose, I see it as a sum of all parts. The way she's placed in the tree, the way she's sitting, the movement of her hair, almost will wisp like and the movement of her clothes and tail, and I think it's all exceptional, so it gets a 10 out of 10. For the face, I feel like it matches the artwork really well, and it does look like Miku, but I do agree that I like the darker mouth prototype better, and so it gets a 8 out of 10. For Moe, I truly view her as a bishoujo, and I really like this interpretation they did of Miku. She looks like a phantasm on a winter's night, and I think it's truly stunning, so it gets a 9 out of 10. Moving on to value, objectively this figure costs 39,380 yen and weighs 1,002 grams, giving her a price per gram of 39.3, which is a 3 out of 5. Subjectively, the paint modeling of this figure bring the value down, and I'd rather see it at 29,000 yen, so it gets a 2 out of 5. For playability and displayability, I appreciate that a figure this wide has a footprint so small, and so it makes it easier to display with other figures, so it gets a 4 out of 5. This brings the 2022 Chinese New Year Miku to a 68 out of 100. A 68 of 100 brings this figure to about the middle of our pack, which sounds about right because I think this figure is very pretty, it matches the artwork, but the modeling and paint quality just were not up to par. I think it's unfortunate that Furu mismarketed this figure by literally putting prototype photos in the wrong light. And I think that's what's garnering a lot of hatred towards this figure as well as people's opinion of the company in general. And it's a shame because I do think that this is a very solid Miku figure and if you can find it on sale for maybe about 20, 25,000, I think it's a must have. For comparison, I do have the Chinese New Year 2021 version which was released in 2022. And as you can tell, they are two completely different figures. The 2021 version is much larger. It's marketed as a 1 7 scale, but it seems like it might be more towards a 1 6 scale. There's fewer elements and they are larger. It looks very plasticky overall and it has a very cartoony expression. Whereas I would say the 2022 version is a more serious artistic depiction. It has a lot more elements and it's much more compact. So I would say that I prefer the 2022 version more. 
Well, that's it for today's video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. You can find a way of supporting our channel in the description below. Be on the lookout in the later half of this year for our Patreon that will get you access to our Discord server since we are tired of being censored everywhere we go in other communities and so we'll just create our own safe place. Until next time, bye!